know, today's generation of collaborative robotics, well, they're very easy to use and very easy to program. And for many users of manufacturing, of course, the, the tendency there is to sort of bypass the integrator level, go ahead, purchase the robot, and do it yourself right on the factory floor. I'm with Ryan Brame, and he's test engineering manager for TUV Rhineland. Uh, Ryan, for the, those who want to do it themselves and integrate for themselves their own factory floor, what is the safety issue of doing that? So it's actually, it's pretty interesting. So as you walk around the show and you, and you look at the collaborative manufacturers claims, a lot of them claim that they have a safe robot, a safe system, it's safe out of the box, right? But it's actually not the case. A lot of these collaborative robot manufacturers give you the ability to create a safe cell, but it's actually up to the integrator and the user to take this, integrate into the cell and actually test it to make sure it's safe. For instance, a robot carrying a knife is no longer safe. I don't care what you do. So it's really, you actually have to consider the application and, and how you actually are going to use and interact with it and test it to make sure you do have a safe cell. Now, uh, TV Rhineland, we sort of think of it as a European UL, if you will, at the same time. So uh, what's, what, what's, what's TV Rhineland's uh, interest? What, how do you function on the safety sphere with collaborative robots? So what, what TV Rhineland is trying to do is actually help integrators and manufacturers uh, test and qualify these cells. And that, that can happen from us actually coming into a facility and actually going through each interaction that a person may have with a collaborative robot cell, issuing a test report, a certification, or whatever a manufacturer needs to show that that cell is safe. Now, Ed, would that uh, form uh, a team that would come to the factory and see it in place? Would you generate a report from that? What's the process? Yes, absolutely. So we would go into a facility where these are being used. We can go to an integrator, a manufacturer. We'd sit down with the team, go through a risk assessment with them, and actually identify how this is going to be used, potential contact situations, potential goes and no-goes, and then really go through and assess the system, actually do some impact testing and things like that to see if it can truly be a collaborative robot system, or if you have to maybe slow things down, change an end effector, add some guarding here or there. Because it's not always the case that you can just take this out of a box, put it down, and use it without any sort of guarding or other safety measures. Now many think that uh, safety simply means no pinch points, but there, what do we mean by safety when we talk about a human-robot interaction? Well, of course, I mean you have a lot of things to think about. You have electrical hazards and mechanical hazards, of course. So, you know, when you take a robot such as this and, and, and you have hazards such as uh, impact, uh, impact force or impact pressure, you know, those are things we really have to consider when looking at something that can be operated around humans, because no longer are these in a cage and you, you don't really uh, interact with it at all or anything. They're in a cage, you stay away. Now I I really have to look at, well, what is this holding? Where is this going to impact on a person? And what damage could that do? And we use standards like uh, RAA 15.606 and RATR 15.806 to actually look at the impact force and pressure level limits on the human body and actually how to assess that to ensure that you actually have a safe collaborative robot system. Ryan Brayman of TV Rhineland says, certify to known safety standards to assure that your collaborative robotics process truly is human friendly.